everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to dive into creating a 3D environment in Blender, and I'll show you how I approach this project step by step. But first things first, we need some reference images to guide us through this process. Now, you can find reference images on various platforms, and while you could use something like Midjourney, I personally prefer Prome AI. It gives me more control and better results for my specific needs. So let's head over to Prome AI, upload a few images, and generate variations that fit our style. If you're new to environment design, using AI-generated references makes it easier to understand lighting, composition, and overall mood. Once we've got our references, it's time to jump into Blender and start creating, creating the environment base. First up, we need to build the base of our environment. We'll start by adding a cube and scaling it down to act as the ground plane. Scale it according to real-world measurements, so everything stays proportional. Subdivide the plane to add some geometry, but don't go overboard. Too many subdivisions might crash Blender, especially if you're working with limited resources. Next, we'll sculpt the ground to create a bit of an uneven, natural surface. Think of it as a dirty, muddy island. After that, add a camera to your scene. Set the focal length between 26 and 35, depending on your environment size. This will give you a clear reference for how everything should look from your final render's perspective. Modeling the house. Let's move on to creating the house. Start with a simple cube and scale it to match the size of your reference image. Use loop cuts to create the roof shape, then select the roof's top edges and drag them up. You'll duplicate the roof's faces using Shift plus D, making the structure quickly and efficiently. For the wooden details and compound, we'll again use the duplicate trick, no need to create new cubes each time. As it just wastes time, adjust the placement to match the reference. Add windows and doors using Blender Kit's free assets. They're super handy and save a lot of time. When adding windows or doors, make sure to use a box as a placeholder. Then select the house. Apply a boolean modifier. And use intersection to cut out spaces for the windows. This method keeps everything clean and precise. So, next, we'll be adding windows to our house design. After we've done that, we'll start adding some details to the house to give it more character. To do this, we need to add edges to the house. You can press Ctrl plus R to add loop cuts. Once you have your loop cuts in place, you can select the edges and extrude them outwards. This will give our house those nice pronounced details that make it look more realistic and interesting. UV mapping and texturing. Once the modeling is done, it's time to UV unwrap the house for texturing. Switch to edit mode, select all faces by pressing A, and choose cube projection. This method works well for most simple structures and keeps the UVs aligned. Now, 
we'll apply textures using the materials we've downloaded from Blender Kit. This step is crucial for making the house look realistic and grounded in the scene. We'll also add some minor details like wooden beams and trim, using loop cuts and extrusions. The more details, the more believable the house will look. Adding grass and scatter objects. Next, we'll add grass to our environment. I'm using a grass asset that I downloaded, and we'll scatter it around the scene using weight painting. This allows us to control where the grass grows more densely and where it's sparser. Red areas will have more grass, gray for medium density, and green for less. It's a great way to create natural looking landscapes. After that, we'll add rocks and other objects. Place a rock on the plane, then use the scatter objects feature to duplicate and spread it across the scene. You can customize the size and density to get the look you want. This technique adds a lot of depth and detail to your environment. Tree placement and lighting. Trees are a key part of any environment, and I've imported a low poly but realistic tree model. Scale and place the trees around your scene, adjusting their positions to match your references. Remember, trees are one of the most impactful elements in an environment, so take your time here. Now, let's talk about lighting. Proper lighting can make or break your environment. I'll be using a simple but effective setup. Start by adding a sky texture in the World Properties tab. This will simulate natural daylight. Adjust the sun's rotation to match the time of day you want to depict. You can play around with the strength and color of the sky texture to get the exact look you want. If you want to add more depth and realism, you can also include a sun lamp in your scene. Position it in a way that complements the natural light coming from the sky texture. Adding clouds and fog. For clouds, download a cloud image from Google and add it as a plane in Blender. Position it according to your camera angle. You can also add fog by creating a cube. Applying a volume scatter shader and and tweaking the density to 0.01 for subtle, atmospheric fog. Compositing and final render. Now that our environment is complete, let's move on to compositing. After rendering your scene, go to the Compositing tab, enable Use Nodes, and add a view layer to connect your render. Adding a glare node will give your scene that extra pop. You can also add a filter to enhance the final look. Make sure everything is connected properly in the Compositing tab so it shows up in your render. Finally, I added some camera animation for a dynamic effect and here's the final result. And don't forget to check out Prome AI for generating those perfect reference images and Blender Kit for downloading all the free textures and assets we use today. Thanks for watching and